Welcome to the Armor Report, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on a Saturday morning at 1130 New York time. I'll always say New York, even though I'm a Floridian now. Um, Armor Report stands for Algorithmic Risk Management Research. I'm your host, Brett Rosenthal. It's a show about quantum investing in the stock market. Quantum means the combination of quantitative execution. So we use algorithms to drive our risk on, risk off decisions. We put it together with a fundamental foundation, and that's the information edge I share with you every weekend and you know, anytime I'm sharing information on this channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about these very things, this quantum mental approach. We're gonna go over the indexes. We're gonna talk about how we're gonna handle the election next week and why, for the last two weeks, we've been raising cash. Okay, we're in a maximum cash position now. I'm going to share with you some thoughts about that. Then we're going to dive into precious metals, discuss how we intend to use them during the week of the election as a hedge. Okay. We'll touch on cannabis a bit. And I'm going to share for you a follow up um, discussion that crystallizes the process of quantum mental investing. I shared with Armor Insiders subscribers on August 17th, the gravity of the situation in Pinterest, the importance of what was happening inside of Pinterest. I shared that video with you, the YouTube audience this morning. So you can go watch that if you haven't already, you can watch it after this show. So I shared with you what I shared with Armor Insiders on August 17th. I put that video up today. And I'm going to do a follow-up to that discussion so that you can understand the investment importance, the potential for what's happening at Pinterest. And we're going to use Facebook's stock progression starting in 2013 as our guide. Okay. And then once I'm done with that, we'll go through Q&A as we always do. So feel free to fill up this chat board. If you enjoy this conversation, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Helps with YouTube. And of course, subscribe. You can subscribe right down here to this channel, this YouTube channel, or the Armour Report itself, armrreport.com. I got links for you right down here. Before we dive in, let me um, remind you, I don't know you personally, even though I've been, I've been chatting with a number of you for a long time, and I, I, I appreciate you all coming back. Um, but since I don't know you personally, I'm not giving you advice. I'm not saying go buy this stock or, you know, go raise cash. What I am doing is sharing 30 years of experience, managing my own capital, managing capital for investors, which I still do through our interactive brokers affiliation, um, to give you a guide. Okay. Professional money managers have tools that individuals just don't have access to. It's been like that since the dawn of time. Don't hate the player, hate the game. That's the way it is. Okay. So your job, you're on YouTube, you're searching for information. You're trying to manage your own capital. And I respect that. Your job is to gather information that professionals are using to protect capital and capture upside. Armor Report is all about protecting, protecting capital first, okay? Never going to come on here and shout at you about how you have to buy this, it's going to go up a lot. That's ridiculous snake oil. I'll tell you the number one way to increase your net worth in the next 12 months. The number one way. Stop losing money. That's the number one way. If you start there and you stop losing money, you could begin to build your net worth over time by making the right investment decisions. And that's what I'm hoping I share with you. So what we're going to do first is let's, let's delve into the indexes because that drives all of our risk decision, as you guys know, at the Armour Report. So we have an Armour uh, risk monitor, we call it. For Armour Insiders, you can go to the website and see this. Very simple. Break it down to green, red, yellow. Okay. Right now we're on Armour risk monitor red. So the risk monitor turned red last week. That's the most important fact for today's discussion, right? 
If you've been following me for the last two weeks, you know we've been on risk management mode, which means we've been raising cash for two weeks. And then last week, uh, this past week, we are in a max cash position now, heading into the election. What I find interesting about that is that this is not a decision made emotionally where we wanted to go to cash because we're afraid of the election. It's a decision made by algorithms that's driving us into cash in front of the election. Interesting. I didn't know that would happen. Okay. Let's take a look at the, at the, at the chart patterns real quick. I'm going to go to the weekly chart. I posed a question last week. Is this the beginning of a cup and handle base or a double top? And I think the markets answered that question for us. Clear double top. Market rolling over, breaking down. This is an Andrews fork that's been in place since 2015. And that top channel line continues to be the resistance. So now we're headed down to a, one of these channel line supports. Could it be this first one that we landed on right now this week? It's possible. Possible. Okay. The 50% retracement line is the uptrend line going back all the way to 2015. So, you know, as a guess, I would say that is the line we're headed to. Okay. That's the line we're probably headed to, which is right down here somewhere which will be right on probably the 200 day moving average. That's where all the real support comes in. So what do I do with this information for armor insiders, for investors, for my own capital? When we get to a location, we don't just buy it. We don't catch falling knives here. When I highlight locations for you, what I'm saying to you is when we get to that price, let's look for a change in behavior. If we get the change in behavior, then we get long. And we call those changes in behavior triggers. Okay. So, hey, by the way, guys, there you go. Happy Halloween. <laughs> my kids are out right now with my wife going to the Halloween store to get dad a Halloween outfit. <laughs> and that's what really scares me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to look like tonight. All right. Sorry, I digress. So from an armor risk portfolio, we're maximum cash, <clears throat> whatever that means to you. We have three portfolios. The armor index only is 100% cash. It just follows algorithms, got banged out of everything. We're in cash, right? And we had a decent run. We just made money again on that run. Okay. So um, we wait now for the next risk on green signal. And I really love that situation. Risk monitor red is not a scary thing. To me, it's the greatest possible time to do research on the conference calls, looking for relative strength. I love stock markets that are going down big because I can find easily the leaders for the next bull run. And we're going to get to Pinterest in a minute. Okay. But that's what we're doing on our desk now this week. So first, first thing to know about today, we're risk uh, off, we're in max cash. How do we handle the election next week? I wanted to pose this question to you. What difference does it make if the market's up big after the election and you're underinvested? What real difference does that make to your net worth over a longer period of time as you try to build success into your portfolio? I would submit to you, it makes no difference. There'll be a day where you're underinvested. Then we'll have five days to put capital to work following the armor investing way. And we'll find a lot of ideas we can invest in. One day won't matter if you're in a heavy cash position and the market goes up. It'll be great, really. It'll be risk monitor green at the end of that day and we'll start putting money to work. Now think about it the opposite way. What will it do to your net worth and your emotional stability 
if you're overexposed to the market and the market drops 5%. I mean, for armor portfolios, we have massive alpha this year. We have dramatically outperformed. Net worth is up across the board. Why would I risk that success on, a, on an event that I can't possibly manage the risk? And I spent a lot of time thinking about this and luckily the algorithms drove us into cash. So it is not much for me to think about. For armor portfolios, my capital, capital I manage, I don't have to think much. I have a maximum cash position, so I'm done. Now I just carry that into the election and you know that's how it goes. I find it very serendipitous because it makes it a lot easier for me. I spent the last couple of weeks talking to you guys saying, how are we gonna hedge the risk we have on? Because if the algos had us long the market going into November 3rd, I would have had to stay long. I don't make emotional decisions. I just follow the algo. And then I would have said, well, do I have to own VIX? Do I have to do this with gold? I mean, now I don't have to do anything. We can just step aside and watch and then look for the next opportunity, put capital to work. We can't possibly know what the response is going to be to the election. We could spitball about it, you know, Personally, I think if any candidate wins in a landslide, the market probably goes up because that means massive stimulus and the economy goes forward. That's the knee-jerk reaction, in my opinion. If there's a hung jury, if it's a close call, if we're counting ballots for months, if nobody wants to concede, that's a negative. The market goes a lot lower. And that's just my, you know, Scenario number one, that's what I'm expecting. Now, the market doesn't care what Brett Rosenthal expects. I mean, so it'll do whatever it wants. I mean, who knows? Biden might get elected, the market will implode because the market will look out into the future and realize if Biden actually does what he's campaigning on, it'll wreck the economy. I don't know. I don't know if the market's gonna be that smart. It might just care about multi-trillion dollars worth of stimulus packages that'll come out of, out of that type of a scenario. So who knows? The point of the armor report is to manage risk first. Algorithmic risk management research. We manage risk. This is a risk that is almost unmanageable and the algorithms tell us go to cash. That's where we're at. Okay. Precious metals. How am I handling it? Um, we already got stopped out. As you know, two weeks ago, we don't own any precious metals mining companies. I love the earnings announcements that are coming out. Go listen to that conference call with Newmont Mining. Total blowout. Love it. Raising the dividend. Stock was up at the end of the week. I can't wait to buy that stock back. But in reality, with the exception of the last, I don't know, two trading sessions, mining stocks have been following the NASDAQ 100. And if the market implodes, mining stocks go down. They're stocks. They're just stocks like any other stock. In the short term, they all go down together. We just saw that in February and March, if you don't believe me. So... It's not really a debate. It happens all the time. So the only asset that I really think could um, go up dramatically if there is massive uncertainty from the election is literally gold bullion. The reason I say that is that you know four years ago in 2016, when Trump was elected, nobody thought he was going to be elected. And it was a massive shock. And in the middle of the night, if you guys remember this, like one in the morning, S&P futures were down 5% and gold was up 5%. Gold was up 5% in the aftermarket, the one in the morning. Now it ended up flipping by the end of the first day of trading because the market realized all of Trump's economic policies, forget about whether or not you like the man, his economic policies were going to create GDP growth, which it absolutely did in the next four years. Okay, so the market figured that out and started to bid up the process. So, um, but for the night of uncertainty, bullion was a great hedge. And so we're carrying bullion into the election. We're carrying a large cash position and we're carrying just a few names left in our portfolio that have yet to be stopped out. They may get stopped out. The way to build your whiteboard, and this is what I love about down markets, the last stocks to get stopped out of your portfolio should be the first stocks you put back into a portfolio because they're telling you they're the strongest names. So 
I'm making a list, I'm checking it twice, I'm having lots of fun doing research this week. Cannabis. Please be advised. There is a, you know, there's going to be a huge move in cannabis one way or the other, in my opinion. A blue wave and the cannabis stocks are going to go berserk. Trump gets reelected, cannabis stocks probably go down. They don't get crushed, but there's going to be probably uh, air that comes out of them, right? Solar stocks, cannabis stocks. These things have run up into the election because it looks like Biden's going to win. When Biden loses, air is going to come out of that, those two groups. You have to expect that. So what we've done on our trading desk is we've already booked 50% of our gains in our cannabis positions, and now we're carrying <clears throat> a manageable position in the election, a position that's just a foothold, right? If they go down big the day after the election because Trump's elected, it's not going to kill our portfolio or our performance. If they go up enormously because of a blue wave, we'll have a foothold, we'll be making money, and we'll be adding to those positions. That's our stance on cannabis, okay? Now, let me, sh let me share with you, let's wrap up real quick by looking at the Pinterest Facebook story again, because this is a microcosm of what the Armour Report is all about, okay? Armour insiders, subscribers, we share all day long our ideas together in the Armour Slack trading desk, right? So we have a Slack room set up for all Armour insiders, and we're on there all day sharing information. It's become really, and when I started the Armour Report, obviously that wasn't, you know, that wasn't happening. The Armour Report started with just a website and no Slack room. And then Miguel, an insider, said to me, what do you think about setting up a Slack room? And I think that was the, one of the greatest ideas I've ever heard. And I want to thank him again for that. So we set up a Slack room. And there's been, um, there's so many benefits of that live trading desk information flow every single day. And I know that, that, that the information flow from me to you was expected right? Live trading desk. I'm sharing with you what stocks I'm buying, how I'm trading, whether or not I'm day trading. That's the information you thought was coming to you. But what I didn't realize when I set up that Slack trading desk was that you were going to bring information to me. It's brilliant. The community of Armour Insiders is like an army of analysts. You guys are bringing me quality ideas. It allows me to then apply the armor investing way to the idea, right? I get on the phone, talk to management if I have to, listen to conference calls, run the algorithms to find the entry points. So we're all as a community building our whiteboard, then using, so that's your fundamental part of quantum, uh, of quantum uh, quantitative analysis, right? quantum mental investing. The fundamental part is as a community, we build that whiteboard. Then we use the quantitative algorithms, right? The armor report algorithms to find entry points. And we're making a lot of money together and it's so much fun. So a shout out to Brian who brought Pinterest into the room. And I'm going to share with you where he did that. Okay, this is a weekly chart of Pinterest, first of all. So you don't get a better cup and handle breakout than you just see right here on the weekly chart of Pinterest. Classic. All right, now let's go to the daily chart. Okay, an armor insider named Brian okay, brought this idea to the trading desk right about here. I'm going to say it was right, right in here. The stock was trading right around 20. Actually, I think it was right back here. It ran up to the 200 day moving average and then it got knocked back down, I think on that earnings number right there. Okay. And then it ended up breaking out here, but he brought it into the room right back here, which gave me time to do the research, which gave us time to start following the algorithms so that we could find the entry point, right? And then, of course, you all might remember this chart 
because I posted it on Twitter and I posted, I talked about it on, on uh, YouTube videos. This earnings announcement right here was a blowout. That was on the 31st. And I posted this on Twitter. If you don't follow me, try to, try to you know, consider doing that. It's at Brett Rosenthal, B-R-E-T Rosenthal, R-O-S-E-N-T-H-A-L, okay? I posted this on the 31st. Begins massive move higher. So let me just share with you the thought process again. And I'm not going to go over the whole thing. You guys can watch a video. I just posted it before this show. Where in the Armor Slack trading room, on the 21st of August, I did a video just for Armor Insiders. It was an exclusive to tell you the importance of what was going on inside of Pinterest. And the roadmap we're following, which was set up for us by Facebook. This is the armor investing way. We look for business models that are dynamic and dominant. We look for chart patterns that are dynamic and dominant. And we then look for past uh, successes that show us a roadmap of what's happening going forward. And that's what's happening inside of Pinterest. So it's no surprise to us that they blew out the number again this week and the stock was up huge. The stock was up huge in one of the worst you know, weeks we've seen of the year as the market's imploding. That is quantum mental investing in a microcosm. And I want to thank Armor Insiders for, for making that slack room as rich as it is when it comes to investment ideas for all of us to attack, dissect, and build an approach together. What I like to say is I feel like we're an armor, we're, we're an army of analysts supported by a tank division of algorithms. And that's how we're creating alpha together. All right. So what's happening inside of Pinterest was a, another quarter of massive growth. And I've been sharing this with you guys uh, in the past about Pinterest. Let me just tell you, the most important part of Pinterest to me is the ad spend direction of the advertising market. There's a, and this is like a hackneyed phrase, but a paradigmatic shift is going on, okay, in advertising. There is a, a technology change of how advertising is delivered. And the top four companies that are dominating that change, as I can see it right now, Google, of course, they're at the top, right? Pinterest, Roku, and Trade Desk. If you haven't done research on those names, you need to start following those companies, listening to conference calls, so you can pick up what's going on in the advertising space, okay? It's that targeted advertising where advertisers are seeing a higher ROI on their ad dollars. So they're driving more capital towards that ad paradigm. And that's what's driving revenue through Pinterest, amongst a whole bunch of other things that look great. So what do we do from here if you don't own Pinterest already? I'm just going to share with this, this one chart with you. You can watch the video in a minute that I posted earlier, but it's just so much fun. I got to share it with you again. Um, what we're seeing inside of... Um, Let me just pull this up real quick for you. I want to show you the, the Facebook chart pattern, okay? So history rhymes, it doesn't repeat, okay? But this was the chart pattern I put up for you guys in, um, in that video on the, on the 17th of August. And I've posted this chart as well, okay? This is Facebook right after they had the same blowout type of quarter that Pinterest had in July. Same reason, same new stock, the stock comes public, analysts hate it, goes down for six months, analysts are sure Facebook will never be able to monetize their business, tell you, tells you how smart analysts are, okay? Then, of course, they have a blowout quarter, oh gosh, wow, they're starting to monetize their business. And, you know, the rest is history, okay? Facebook stock is a skyrocket. Now, I'm showing you this chart so you don't feel like you've completely missed it if you're missing Pinterest right now, okay? You, you've not completely missed it. 
There'll be pullbacks to the 50-day moving average, which is this black line right here. There'll be pullbacks to the 100-day moving average. There'll be pullbacks to the 200-day moving average. All the way up on Facebook. All the way up. So, to wrap up this segment and get to q and I'll say this. When you identify a name like Pinterest and you can see the similarities like we saw on Facebook, you know you want that to be at the top of your whiteboard. So we have a market going down, uh, market looks ugly, all these things. No doubt Pinterest will come down if the market keeps getting wrecked. Don't let the weakness in Pinterest get you off the bust. Okay, if there's weakness because the market's going down, that's normal. That's setting up the next entry point. Okay, so our job now is to find names, you and I. Together, we find names that are like Pinterest, where the relative strength is going like this as the market goes down, and we load up the top of our whiteboard. Now, Armor Insiders have already started doing that. So you can go look at the website, go to the whiteboard. I've put a list together at the top of the whiteboard. It doesn't mean I run out and buy them now. It means these are the fundamental players that we want to own because the, the earnings are dynamic and the stocks are seeing an expansion in relative strength versus the S&P. And when we get the next risk on buy signal, we'll know exactly what stocks to target to start filling out our portfolio again. And Pinterest will be at the top of that list. Let's get to Q&A, guys. What do you got for me? All right. Um, Quail Hollow, General Motors, Brett. All right, let's go to General Motors. Let me just cut down my time frame here so we don't go back 12 years on everything. All right, um, General Motors. Well, let me ask you this, Quail. The Armor Investing Way is about putting three different types of fundamental ideas in our portfolio. One, our favorite, what we, what we try to load the portfolio with, our Pinterest type of investments, dominant players, dominant um, uh, business models, high margin business models, uh, a moat around the business, hard for people to, uh, companies to, to take them down. Uh, these stocks go on long term runs, you know, that, that increase net worth in a meaningful way. That's the William O'Neill style of investing, growth stocks, right? Then we've got, you know, um, we like to invest in companies that and uh, companies that make products and services we use, Peter Lynch style of investing. So we own shares of Chewy. We booked our profit there, but the money we made in Chewy this year is going to pay for all you know <laughs> of the Chewy boxes showing up at my front door because we just got a puppy you know for a long time to come. So it makes it lots of fun. It's like I got a puppy for free after making money in Chewy stock. Okay, so that's a Peter Lynch style. And then the third style is our turnaround stories, but I like to call them value for a reason. I don't just buy value, it's value for a reason. So I'm asking you, what's the turnaround going on at GM? Do you really believe that there's a turnaround story going on in GM? What is the reason, the fundamental reason? First of all, I look at the chart and what we like to do is try to find charts that are breaking down or are breaking out of downtrends, okay? So we don't really see a breaking of a downtrend yet. We just see a rally back to the downtrend. Now, as, um, as a different example of a turnaround story, we're long shares of Under Armour, okay? This was another, by the way, Armour Insider that brought this idea into the Armour Slack trading room. Thank you, Chris, for that, okay? So, but look at Under Armour. Already, we were buying it as it was breaking the downtrend. Now they just had a blowout quarter surprising everybody, okay? So I'm just asking you to ask yourself, what's the reason behind the investment thesis of GM? It can't just be because you think the economy is going to pick up or something and more people are buying cars. Like there's got to be a real reason. If you think it's the, 
the electric hummer that's going to start doing the trick. Oh, okay, maybe, but that chart pattern is still in formation to me. It's not um, set up yet where we would put capital to work. Okay. Sean Hill, IBM. Holy smokes. There's a, um, there's a, uh, really a real consternation here. So those of you who've watched the last couple of weeks, you know, it's right, right in here. I was talking about IBM's a no brainer. This thing has to work. They're spinning off, you know, the, the weak part of their business. They're going to focus on Red Hat and the, and the hybrid cloud. It's a massive uh, um, TAM, total addressable market, massive TAM. So it's a huge opportunity. We sold the stock in front of earnings. We did not hold it into earnings. And this is the response after earnings. Okay, stock broke down. Partially, it's also because the market was imploding. So people just used it as an example to sell. Anybody who thought the stock was going to go up because earnings were going to be great is missing the picture. Earnings aren't great yet. The stock gapped up here because they were going to divest or spin off their slower moving businesses. That's going to take time to do. There's going to be a spin off. Then you'll start to see hopefully rapid growth in the cloud based businesses of the, of the IBM shares that you're holding. But so, you know, it wasn't a surprise to see whoever got trapped in IBM here sell it because their earnings were no good. I mean, that's kind of silly, but that's the way it is. So IBM's right back down to the bottom of its base. Maybe we should do something like that on IBM. Okay. And my guess is it'll hold in here. The dividend of five, five, almost five and a half percent is too big. Stock's not going a lot lower in my opinion. I think the turnaround is going to work. And at some point I want to own the stock but I just don't own it right now. It is on the whiteboard, just not at the top of the whiteboard. AMD, you know, um, just following the market down, I don't see any reason to own it right here, okay? And of course, when you guys are asking me these questions, you have to understand right now it's risk monitor red. So I'm not gonna be answering the, any, any question today by saying, yeah, that stock should be bought, okay? No stocks are being bought on the Armour trading desk right now. It's risk monitor red. We don't buy stocks when risk monitor is red. So the questions you're asking me, I'm going to answer more as should this be at the top of our whiteboard or is it not on the whiteboard? Okay. So GM's not on the whiteboard. AMD can be on the whiteboard, but it's not at the top of the whiteboard. Next question. Mark, what my first 12 bets with DraftKings? Okay. Good for you. Any of these whiteboard candidates, Amazon, Fastly, Twitter, DraftKings, IBM. Okay. All right. Great. Great, Mark. Let's get it. Let's rapid fire through it. Okay. Amazon. Let's take a look. Our, we're going to, I'm glad you just asked that question. It's so weird. It's like, um, I, I didn't, I, it's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to go through and say, is this a whiteboard name? Is it at the top of the whiteboard or not? Or does it not make the whiteboard at all? Okay. Amazon. Right, this is not a whiteboard name for me. Nothing wrong with Amazon. I mean, it's a big cap, you know, uh, you know, stock. I mean, you can always own Amazon, but I'm looking for something earlier in its life cycle when it's, it's at its most explosive, which I think is like a Pinterest. So opportunity cost of money, I'd rather own a Pinterest or a Roku or something else where I think, you know, it's, it's, it's in that process. I'm not a buyer of Amazon. Okay. Although the, the business is great, right? Fastly. Fastly's on the whiteboard because I like the business model and I think it will eventually correct itself. But um, we've avoided this stock ever since right here when the company said they have a TikTok problem, right? So it, it, when a company tells you that their biggest customer, you know, might no longer be a customer, you, you don't have to, you know, sit around and guess anymore what's going to happen. The stock's going down. Period. Even though the stock broke out here, that's just people not listening to what management said on the previous conference call. This is why it's so important for you guys to listen to conference calls. Management said they had a problem with their biggest customer. And then, of course, now they have the problem has been revealed and the stock is getting destroyed. It's on the whiteboard because I like the business. I think they will recover once the TikTok problems out of the way. But I'm avoiding the stock right now. It's at the bottom of my whiteboard. Twitter, I have no interest in. I've avoided Twitter for a long time because I think Jack Dorsey doesn't know how to run a company. Now, you could say to me, well, he's figured out how to run Square. 
All right, maybe he has, you know. I'll own Square, you know, but I haven't owned Square either. I don't like Jack Dorsey, and I stay away from companies whose management teams I don't like. Sometimes that hurts me. Sometimes I miss upside. A lot of the time, it saves me from disaster. DraftKings, I can't wait to own the stock. The stock is down like this because they did a secondary up here where 50% of the secondary were selling shareholders. That means the company got none of the benefit of the secondary, but a whole bunch more stock was dumped on the market. And that's why the stock goes down. Write that down, put it in your captain's log, remember it for next time. If you own a stock that does a secondary, that's okay. But if half of the secondary are selling insiders, that's not okay. So this stock has to digest all of that new uh, um, liquidity without any benefit to the company, and that's why the stock keeps going down. So it's on the whiteboard because I like the idea, but um, you know, Penn National Game is coming down too. So for a while there, it seemed like I missed the whole move. And this is something that's worth remind, remembering, guys. The market gives you an opportunity all the time. You're not missing any move, okay? Except for swing traders you are. But from an investment standpoint, okay? If you love an idea and you're patient and you wait, it will come back down to the 200-day, 50-day, 100-day moving average and set up another entry point. And that's where you go at it. Sometimes you pay higher, sometimes you get it cheaper. You wait for the location, you get a trigger, you put the capital to work. This name goes on the whiteboard for sure. All right, uh, IBM, we already talked about it's on the whiteboard. Intel, no interest, I'm not putting that on the whiteboard. The chart's terrible, I have no interest in that stock and what they're doing. And um, uh, UD, UTX. UTX? UTX. No, I don't get a chart there. So maybe that's a different symbol you're thinking of. Um, Mark Anderson, I'd love to see you as an Armour Insider. We're welcome to the family if you decide to do that. We look forward to having you. Um, all right. Francine, Disney. Yeah, right. Let's take a look at Disney. Okay. Disney. Um, wow, you know, we're not in the stock right now, obviously. Um, you know it's on the whiteboard. It's going to remain on the whiteboard. I think Disney's a great idea. I think the market's suffering big time and it's dragging down any Dow type of stock like that. But um, a breakout back above the 200-day moving average probably gets us to re-engage in the stock. I, I like the idea. I particularly like the idea when I hear that Netflix is now raising prices. I don't like the Netflix idea, by the way. I think raising prices for Netflix is actually a mistake. I don't think that the content is that great. And I feel like the reason, it's great. I mean, the content's great. I, I, I'm a Netflix guy. <clears throat> but I don't think I'm going to pay double for my Netflix subscription. I really don't. I can live with, you know, Disney and Prime. I don't think there's, you know, price elasticity for this. I really don't. We'll find out. But I think now what's going to happen on the next conference call is that analysts are going to be focused on churn. And I think that they're raising prices because they realize they can't grow through customer acquisition as fast as they used to. This is a problem to me. Netflix is not on the whiteboard. Disney is. Jason, I've been waiting for months for SC pullback. Yeah. Yep, SC pullback. All right. It's on the 50 now. That's the first touch of the 50 since May. That's clearly a relative strength leader. I should have it on my whiteboard. Um, you're asking me, Jason, if you should add to it. Um, okay. I'm going to say this again. You might have already, you know, I'm just going to say it again. You guys could do whatever you want. If you're asking about the armor investing way, I don't buy stocks just because they hit a location. And I don't buy stocks when the risk monitor's red. Okay? 
You could do whatever you want. The armor investing way, where we protect capital first and capture upside second, is to look for the indexes to give us direction. When the indexes are risk monitor red, we don't buy anything. Then we look at locations on individual stocks. When we get to the location, we don't buy it. We look for reversal triggers, telling us that that location will hold. Then we look to buy it. My thought for you. All right. Um, Festeroso, I'm so glad you made your money on Pinterest. Excellent. Great. Oh, that's great. Glad to hear that. Um, WPM. Yeah. Um, all these stocks had a nice bounce, but look at that chart pattern on wheat and precious metals. It's got awful. Okay. There's nothing sexy about that pattern. Nothing. So now if the thing were to rip higher next week and break the downtrend, then it would be sexy. That would be a, you know, island reversal below the 100 day moving average, but it didn't do that yet. I think the best stock to watch in this space is going to be Newmont, which that chart looks a little bit better. It's a bit tighter and it had really good earnings. And so the stock was up big on Friday, 3%. Okay. Tech Monkey, good morning. Deb, how are you? Hope you're having a good weekend. What are your thoughts on Canopy? Um, on what Canopy is doing with acreage right now? Is it worth investing in acreage? Um, truth be told, I haven't looked at the new deal between acreage and Canopy. I did a lot of work on it when it first happened. Um, I don't think you need to take that risk. I don't see the need to take the risk and buy an acreage, trades on the CSE, illiquid asset. If there's a really positive development in the US on the cannabis front, shares of canopy growth are gonna go up dramatically. Do I need the added risk and illiquidity of acreage? I just don't. If I want to get paid a lot more, if you say to me, I want a lot of risk, I want to take tons of risk, then I submit to you, go look at the, the go look at equity call options on canopy growth that go out a year. The leaps on canopy are so cheap. You could take that kind of risk where you would get the same type of payout as you would probably get owning shares of acreage. Now, I'm not recommending people do that. Please, please, guys. All right. Do we have to go through this again every every time I have these conversations? You know, for whoever's out there that doesn't understand, I'm not telling you to go buy options. All right. But I'm just saying from a risk reward standpoint, I could create um, an opportunity in canopy growth stock that's more liquid. It's an institutional favorite. I think this is a stock that skyrockets if there's a blue wave. It, it, that's, let me tell you something. Canopy growth for the first time in eons has an accumulation distribution rating of A at the William O'Neill service. I haven't seen an A accumulation on a cannabis stock in forever. And I just noticed last week that canopy growth is an A accumulation, meaning institutions are buying the stock. It's the only way institutions can really do it. They can't buy US MSOs. Many of them can't buy it. So the go-to stock is going to be canopy growth if there's a blue wave and everyone thinks that marijuana is about to be legalized everywhere. Canopy is the way to play it. Kronos is a distant second because of their connection to Altria and because of their cash hoard. From my personal account, and I'm not recommending this. I say it over and over again. People ask me personally, do I own US MSOs? I do. My favorite are True Leaf, Green Thumb, Cresco, and Cure Leaf. Okay? If something good happens to Acreage, those other four stocks are going to skyrocket. And at least those other four stocks have business models, revenue, earnings that are phenomenal and growing exponentially. All right. So that's how I'd play it. 
Um, oh, <laughs> Raymond, <laughs> you're killing me. PACV, I keep uh, forgetting to do work on this. It's not really that I'm forgetting, Ray. I'm going to do it, okay? I'm going to do it, and I'm going to share it with you, so keep reminding me. But I'll look at the chart pattern. I'm not buying the stock up here, so I don't feel... Uh, there's just too many other things I'm doing all week. I just haven't gotten to this yet. You know, I was covering the Pinterest conference call, the Etsy conference call. I was on the Overstock conference call. You know, we were day trading aggressively this week, making a lot of money trading the S&P. Uh, when volatility spikes like this, we day trade in our Slack trading room. Um, and, and so I just had such a focus on that. I couldn't get to Pacific Biosciences yet, but it is on my list to get to. Please keep asking me, okay? Ford, uh, okay, Tech Monkey, Ford is so low. Do you think they will pick up third party? Um, uh, I, yeah, I just, it's a good question. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a buyer of GM or Ford, okay? Just looking at the chart pattern. The first thing we do is scrunch it up and we look at the trends, right? And so if we look at Ford's trend line, and just like General Motors, all that these stocks have done, in my mind, is rally up to the downtrend, okay? They've just rallied to the downtrend. You know another chart pattern that looks like this? Right? Altria. You all keep asking me about Altria, and all it does is run up to the downtrend and fail, okay? GM and Ford have the same type of patterns. They run up, and then, and then they die because there's no real change to the business. So I just don't have an interest in this. If I'm going to go with um, solar or, or some type of, you know, I know we're talking about EVs, but solar and EVs kind of go together. I like solar run. It's all the way back down to the 100-day moving average. That's an interesting looking pattern. Not to buy it, right? This is the, what goes at the top of my whiteboard. All right, that might be at the top of my whiteboard if we got a reversal and a trigger here. Um, so... I'm just not a big fan of electric electric vehicles. I just, I'm not, I'm not, I don't buy it. I just think it's hype going into the election. I want to see how they trade afterwards. Chewy, is it done or just a short break? Chewy, um, you know, obviously I don't know the answer to that question, but it's done for Armor Insiders. Okay, so we bought Chewy right in here, right on the $55 area, 56 we sold a piece of it out right in front of the earnings number. It sold off. We held it, rallied back up, reversed, and we sold the rest of it. All right, so we booked a nice little profit on Chewy. Top of my whiteboard name, love the idea. I did see that I have to read more about that story. Somehow PetSmart's not happy about spinning off the rest of Chewy, so that might get a little ugly, and it might keep the stock from going up for right now but that could set up the next entry point. So it's definitely on the whiteboard. All right. Um, FedEx. Where did I miss FedEx? Whoops. Sorry about that. Look at that incredibly ugly chart pattern called Microsoft. May as well take a peek at that. That's something to also consider, guys. Look at the leadership stocks. They look god-awful right now. So... If leadership's breaking down, the rest of the market follows. Rotation, write this down, guys. Ready? Ready? Write this down. Rotation is a myth sold by investment banks, sold by brokers to get you to do trades. Okay? If leadership breaks down, the market's going lower. It's not rotating to a bunch of beat up old stocks that are going to start going up. Right? So there's FedEx. And, you know, obviously FedEx should be in the portfolio, and uh, I totally missed that. And I blame that, quite frankly, on Armour Insiders because nobody brought it to my attention. <laughs> Just, of course, I'm kidding, right? So there's, there's the, the move right there. I mean, I'm just sick that I don't own that. That should have been bought right after that earnings announcement that something had dramatically changed for FedEx, and bang. All right, so um, I don't have it on my whiteboard right now, and I'm not looking to buy it, but I could be wrong there. TBT, you're talking about ultra short bonds, the opposite of TLT, All right? So let's look at treasuries. So you think treasuries are going to break down in here? I've long since stopped, Ray, I've stopped trying to trade bonds a long time ago. 
not a long time ago, in, in March. I stopped in March. We made money February. It ripped higher. We got out. And I haven't done anything since. And the reason is I don't think you can look at chart patterns and make determinations when the Fed is manipulating the market. When central banks are manipulating the asset, I can't look at that. I see what you're saying. That looks like a chart breakdown in TLT. I just don't believe that's going to happen. I don't think the Fed would allow it to happen. They'll just print more money and support the asset. So I'm not, I'm not trading that, that asset. Agree on Netflix. Fastly, please. J. Crow, I already talked about Fastly, and, I, and it's on the whiteboard, but it's not something to be owned right now. You're going to have to really, um, you're going to have to see a whole new chart pattern develop. This stock has trapped a whole bunch of bulls that are trapped now. And that's going to be massive overhead supply all the way down. And you're going to get a pattern that starts to look like this. Okay? All these bulls were trapped in slack. And the stock just you know keeps running into overhead over and over again. Overstock. Listen to the conference call this week. No interest in owning the stock. Okay? Um, I tried, I, I explained this to Armor Insiders. I, after the earnings announcement, I went, I was in our Slack trading room and I was listening to the conference call and I, I usually live, you know, t tweet or whatever you want to call it in, in Slack. Um, live comment what I'm hearing in the conference call. And I, I told people at Armor Insiders during the week, I can't stand the management team here. Okay. They are promoters, plain and simple. And so um, that makes for a very dangerous stock. Can it have rips higher from time to time? Absolutely. But as an investor, investing is just as much about people as it is products and earnings. Just as much. I can't tell you the amount of money I've saved in my life after meeting face to face with the management team and saying, I cannot trust these people. I'm not investing in this asset over and over and over again. If we had time, I'd share with you a story. Maybe I'll do it in the future. About when I was a young man, just got into the business, I sat face to face across the table with the CEO of a company. Stock ripped higher and eventually went to zero and that CEO is now in prison. And I can tell you, I was working with my dad at the time. We walked out of that meeting this was the benefit of working with my dad. I was in my 20s. What would I know, really? I walked out of that meeting. And my dad said to me, we have to sell every share we own immediately. And we were up big on the stock. We bought it. And the stock skyrocketed. We came out of that meeting. My dad said, we have to sell every single share immediately. This guy's lying. I mean, the hair on the back of my neck standing up right now because I remember the conversation so clearly. And we sold all, you know, we sold everything. We, we bought the stock in the 20s. It was trading in the 40s. And as a young man, I was like, Dad, are you kidding? This stock's on fire. I don't think we should touch it. Blah, blah, blah. He said, son, that man's a liar, and we have to get out of the stock immediately. We sold it in the 40s. It went into the 50s, and then the stock went to zero, and the man's in jail. Okay? So listening to conference calls, you don't even have to be across the table from a guy. You can listen to a conference call and you can hear somebody promoting somebody who wants you to love them. Okay. That's just a warning flag. There's something wrong with that. Do you think Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or Elon Musk for that matter, or Eric Schmidt, do you think any of those guys got on a conference call and begged you to love them and told you, you know, grandiose things about what was going to happen? No. They just kept knocking down the numbers. In fact, usually they're a little arrogant, right? We're great. We're killing it. You can do whatever you want. Those are the guys I like. Those are the stocks that go up a lot. And guys that come on and try to convince me of how great the business is. Whew, red flag, man. Red flag. Oops, I keep doing that. Apparently, I really want you to see Microsoft. Okay. Um, 
A-T-E-N. I don't know this stock, so I have to do a little research for you there. No idea. Oh, A-10 Networks. Oh, yeah, I do. All right. I don't have any opinion, though. It's not on my whiteboard. I'd have to do some work. Um, I don't buy Chinese stocks, which could be a problem because, you know, Alibaba's gone up a lot. But I just don't buy Chinese stocks. And it's, you know, partially because kind of like the management issue, I can't listen to, I can't get on a conference call, I can't uh, get any feel for the management team whatsoever. And I don't trust the accounting coming out of China. So how can I own these stocks? So it's just an opportunity cost of money. I mean, if I want to own the, an Asian, I'd rather own SE before I'd own shares of Alibaba. I don't trust any financial number coming out of China. So, you know, and I can't listen to the management team. I can't interview somebody. I can't talk to somebody at the home office. So from an armor investing way, I just can't own these stocks. Take a look at XELA. We're coming up on the hour mark. We're at the hour mark, guys. Nothing to do with that stock. I don't trade penny stocks. That's not my thing. Okay, M-G-I-N. Oops. M-G-N-I. That's why it won't come up. Okay. No thoughts for you on this one. Digital advertising in, in, in inventory. Wait, provides a technology solution to automate the purchase and sale. Well, you know what? Maybe I should do some research on that. Whose idea was that? Rich White. Let's do a little research on that together, shall we? That's the sweet spot, right? That's what I'm interested in. All right. Um, A couple more questions, guys, and we'll wrap this up for the weekend. P-L-U-G. Plug power. Yeah, not on my whiteboard, but I'll do some work on it. Chart looks pretty good. Cadence Design. Is that what that is? C-D-N-S. That's still Cadence Design? Yeah. Yeah, quality name. Cadence Design. Look at that relative strength. It almost doesn't know the market's going down. It's a great idea. Yeah, and um, if I'm going to go buy a big cap stock instead of Amazon, it's going to be Google. So, um, Jasmine, I, I do like Google a lot, and I think that that ad spend is, you know, right up there uh, alley. So, if there's, a, if there's a big, you know, fang type of stock that I'm going to own, it's going to be Google. And we'll wrap up on NIO, N-I-O. I know everyone loves this, to, you know, an electronic vehicle, you know, Chinese company. Again, I don't buy Chinese stocks. And, um, you know, have at it if you want it. There's a lot of money to be made there. The stock's up huge. And um, congratulations to anybody who plays it. But for me, it's, a, it's an opportunity cost of money, guys. It's opportunity cost of money. The armor investing way, part of that way, is to do fundamental research. Fundamental research, I have to be able to go on the website. It has to be a website that's easy to navigate where I can gather information. I can get on the phone and talk to management. I can listen to our conference calls and I can trust the financials as much as financials can be trusted. Okay, Chinese stocks don't make it for me, so I'm just not going to own them. But I hope you guys do well and don't let me stop you. Okay, but certainly the chart looks great. I get it. All right, guys, I wish you all a great weekend. Relax, enjoy your candy collecting tonight, and I'll see you all again uh, on Monday. Armor Insiders, bright and early, 8.30 Monday morning. Have a great weekend, all.